Hello, everyone. This is Mark Sardini from Hewlett Packard Enterprise, and I'm here with Dave Loper. And today we're going to talk about the manual install process from ISO. Specifically, we're going to talk about preparation, a little bit about the install process, and then we're also going to cover the main options. So, uh, Dave, let's go into it. All right. Thank you, Mark. So, yeah, when you get Clear OS, um, you're going to put it on to a machine through an ISO process, like through uh, a burnable DVD or uh, through uh, burning the ISO to uh, a USB. And when you boot up off of that media, you're going to be uh, faced with this menu. The default option here is to test the media and install ClearOS. We recommend that for the first time that you do a download because that'll check the uh, ISO to make sure that what you've got is what's being sent from the server itself. So we're going to go ahead and do that now and it'll, it'll boot. So uh, while we're waiting for things to come up, Dave, um, I, I'm assuming that folks need to know how they can go about getting ClearOS. What, what are some of the options they have available? To them? Well, the fastest way is to use this uh, URL that we have on the screen, which is uh, clearos.com slash HPE slash ClearOS 7. And that'll start the, install, uh, the download process for the ISO image. And then there are some uh, checksums that you can do for security purposes to, to do that. And you can go to mirror.clearos.com to uh, grab those, those checksums or go and look at the release notes for ClearOS. Um, but once you have the install, then you're going to need to commit it to a, a, uh, a CD-ROM or to a, a USB, USB drive. Yeah. Yeah. Or um, sometimes you can, if you're doing like a hypervisor, you can just use it as the ISO. But when you burn it to a CD or a USB, you need to do it as an image. You can't just copy it to a file system that already exists there and, and have it work for you. So once you have that on there, then you need to tell your BIOS to boot from that media. Um, on HPE gear, uh, like on Polyant gear, that's um, choosing the, the, you know, the boot options uh, menu item. And uh, that can be done in the BIOS uh, on many systems or uh, from, the, from the regular RBSU boot screen. So after you boot up uh, ClearOS, you'll come to this, this main decision tree and this part is actually really simple. Um, we, we put a lot of the configuration into the install wizard, which we're going to cover a little bit later. But for the most part, you're going to pick your language and your keyboard here at this first phase, and then press continue. There's a lot of different languages there. Yeah, there are. There's, uh, there's a lot of different languages that are supported in the installer. And for the most part, uh, there's about 80 uh, plus languages that are supported in the, in the final product. Now, once you get here, it's going to ask you uh, different options. Now, any options that has an exclamation point in it is something that you're going to have to go into and set something up in. A lot of these other options are here. They're really advanced options. Generally speaking, you don't need to do anything with them. Even the network and host name, you don't really need to set up and configure at this point in the, in the install. You can do that later. But any ones that have an exclamation point, you need to address what's going on here. So on this, I'm going to select these hard drives. Now, these are hard drives that are on the system right now that the OS is recognizing? Yes, I'm doing this from a VM um, space, and I've created some 8 gig hard drives just for, for testing. Um, but uh, any of your hard drives are going to show up here. Now, if you don't see any hard drives and you're using some older uh, HPE gear, you, it may not see them because you've got like the uh, dynamic smart ar array turned on and you need to turn that off for those those drives to appear. And Claros uh, supports both UEFI and legacy mode. Um, we recommend that you use uh, the UEFI uh, mode to do the install. And once you do this and you select these drives, you can say, I will configure partitioning. Now, if, they're, if these are completely blank drives, it's going to just take it at this point. But if you have previous data on here, it's going to say, hey, there's some previous data here, and we need to address what's going on. In this case, I've got um, the, the, this, drive, this drive here that needs to be blown away. Um, you can just uh, delete any partitions if you're doing a manual uh, install. And you can say, look, I want to uh, install ClearOS in LVM and uh, create my partitions manually. I'm going to say delete all of the other ones. And LVM is the Linux 
great. LVM is a logical volume manager and it allows you to do a number of things. You can do RAID in it, you can do volume sets in it. Um, there's, there's two different types of RAID that support it and we're going to talk about that in a different video. But um, you can do RAID under LVM or you can do RAID on, on the partition level. So uh, here I'm going to say click to uh, create some automatically. This would be some, some default uh, partitions that I create. And here I'm going to accept the changes and I get a, a clean board. Now optionally you can just say automatically configure partitions and take care of it. And if you do that then you know and that's perfect for trying out Clear OS and seeing how you like it. But if you if you do that it'll just wipe out whatever's uh, on there and, and blow it away. It'll ask you to confirm that if you already have data on the disks. So here it says, hey, there's these, these drives. I want to reclaim the space. I want to delete everything that's on there. And it will ask us to confirm that. So if they have a new machine and they've got fresh drives, really it's just identifying the drives. That's pretty much it because there's nothing on the drive. Yeah, if they say do an automatic install and there's nothing on the drives, it's not going to come back and question that's just going to do the install. Um, if there is data on there or other partitions on there, it's going to it's going to let you know that because um, you know maybe you're trying to dual boot a system and you got some special thing that you're trying to do, or maybe you're doing a, a, a restore of ClearOS and you've got all your data on a data partition. You don't want to blow that away, right? You want to keep that as you're doing a reinstall. So that basically is it. Once you do the uh, begin install, you'll be presented with this last uh, screen that is uh, going to do the install. This progress bar will uh, go until it completes. And while it's doing that, you can set the password for the root user account. Now the default user is root, and you can set a password here. If I set a weak password, like this for example, I'm going to set this to the password, which is the default password if ClearOS comes pre-installed on your system. And it's something that you need to change right away if your password's password. But here, uh, if, I, if I try to do it with a weak password, it's going to say, hey, it's, it's a weak password. Don't use that. Try it again. And you can supply something that's a little bit that's a little better. So if they go ahead and create the password here, and let's say, for example, they forget it in the future, what's their? So if you forget your password, and you still have physical access to the box, um, you can reset it. There are how-tos out there that will show you how to do it. It's, it's a little entailed. You have to be able to shut down the machine and reboot it from rescue mode. And that's where you're going to want to keep your ISO because that ISO, you can use it to uh, boot up into, uh, into a rescue mode to do this. Um, you can also do this using a method called RD break which allows you to uh, boot up into a, a type of safe mode. But you have to have physical access on the box, to the box, which is important that you know, you've got physical security as well as uh, you know, logical security for your, your hardware and your IP. Gotcha. So um, after all this is, is completed, is it's going through its setup, is there anything else that the user should be gathering or for or it just presents everything in order? Well, by default, it's going to put your first NIC on DHCP and try to get an address. And uh, we'll cover that in the install uh, wizard guide um, and, uh, and, and some of those things. We, uh, that interface that, that's going to come up that first time you boot will allow you to set the network uh, policies for the various different NICs. And from there, you're going to do everything from a web browser. So really, this part of the install is um, as much of the, uh, you know, having a monitor and keyboard that you, you need at a, at a minimum if you're installing from, from ISO. If you know where the server is going to land, or if you'd set the network settings uh, during the install, then from there on out, you can configure everything from the web browser in kind of a headless mode. So it really makes it faster because you know, you can, you know, in, in headless mode, and when you're on your web browser, you can open up multiple tabs, you can be looking at different, you know, types of information. It's a lot faster way to deploy because you're not saddled in front of a specific, you know, console screen with a, you know, with a keyboard. You go uh, 
uh, you know, in a data center environment, you could actually just leave the room and go up to your workstation and continue from there. So really, right now, to do this manual install from ISO, they're going to need to have a monitor connected just to get through these initial steps. Yes, or uh, even a, and another way that you can do this is if you're using ILO Advanced, you can do the entire thing through ILO and, and go from beginning to end. You can do the, the whole install, and that is really the fastest way that we that we, we do that. And that's the way that we actually test in our labs uh, to see how well Claros is installing as we come up with new features in the installation uh, process. So, yeah, I, I highly recommend uh, the ILO Advance uh, because you get so much power on it. But truth be told, once you get the uh, console working uh, with the network connection, uh, you can do everything else from the, the web browser or through other remote tools. So right now, it's going through the unpacking process of the ISO. Sure. And this takes about how long to complete? It, it depends on the hardware. If you're using SSDs, this will go really, really rather fast. And um, at the end of this process, um, you know, it's just going to say, hey, it's time to reboot the server. Um, there are some other tools that you can use to even automate it further. So ClearOS supports um, Kickstart, which is an automated way to do uh, deployments of ClearOS. You can go ahead and set up all of these different parameters from a, a file and even have the password defined, have it set to reboot, and you can even do other types of scripting and other advanced features so that you could actually deploy uh, a ClearOS solution that is uh, pretty much ready to go, has even apps from the marketplace installed and other types of things. It, it really depends on how much you know, how, how, how much of a, a benefit or value it's going to be to uh, deploy, you know, uh, ClearOS on a regular basis. And in some environments that do it regularly, it's worth the investment. You set up the Kickstart file, um, you can even use your own um, FTP or HTTP sites to set up, uh, you know, even custom software and have your Kickstart automatically deploy uh, those types of, uh, of software. Um, and it's a really, really powerful tool. We use the same Kickstart that they use for CentOS and RHEL. So you know, all of the good tips that you find out there on the, the internet that have to deal with that um, version 7 uh, also apply to ClearOS. So if I'm a partner and I'm thinking about doing this on a, a recurring basis, I would want to pursue one of those paths to streamline the process. Yeah, yeah. I would say if you're doing more than, uh, you know, uh, I'd say more than 50 installs a year, you're going to you're gonna want to invest the time to do that. Um, and anything left from that, it, it depends, right? And, um, but, you know, Kickstart is so easy that you can even automate some very simple aspects to it that may be like, you know, setting up the typical disk deployment that you do or, you know, the default password and, um, and then just passing those parameters um, that first time when you're on that command line to install clear OS is really rather easy you just say hey go to this kickstart location and that can be you know even a, a remote uh, location or a USB disk or, or some other device so we'll have other tutorials that talk about that advanced feature elsewhere but um, yeah it's really a it's really a fantastic way to deploy uh, clear OS in a, in a large scale or in a virtualization type capability now we've talked a little bit in the past about our, I, I can't I don't know if I've got the terminology right, but a quick select file or something that, that allows you to pre-populate everything like you were talking about before that has all the parameters. What's that called in Clear OS? Yeah, a quick select file is basically just a list of applications in the marketplace that you want installed. And you'll do that at the end of the installation wizard. We'll talk more about that when we do when we talk about the installation wizard. And you can look at the links uh, that we've provided along with this video so that you can get to that. But what that does is that allows you to set up a specific template of apps that you want to install. And that's really important because some apps are not available uh, unless you complete the, the registration wizard. Like some apps, paid apps, for example, aren't available as you know just downloadable over the, the internet. And so you may want to be able to register the box first and then deploy your apps instead of doing it like in a kickstart 
Um, and with the quick select file, uh, you can just queue up the number of apps that you want installed and then you know, just boom, 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 you're going to uh, deploy those. So it's, it's amazing. I, I did a install just the other day and I had three servers that I had to set up and I just set up one of them and I did the registration on the other two and employed the quick select file and boom, it set them all up and because I uh, already uh, finished the installation which and registered the system and it already pre-purchased those apps for those specific systems, all of those paid apps went on uh, you know, just without, uh, without even having to go through all of that other extra and so that would be a um, classic example of, hey, you've, you've created a certain recipe. You know, yeah, recipe for, for your environment that you want to repeat over time. And, and it could be that you have several of these and you deploy one in this case and then one in another case. But, you know, it just depends on the customer that you are working with and what they want. Yeah, absolutely. And those files, we're using, you know, kind of open methods for those files. So there isn't anything, you know, super complex about them if you open them up. They're going to look very, very plain. They're going to have a list of the apps by their app names. And anybody that's a serious integrator is going to want to, you know, invest a little time to find out what those exact app names are. And one of the things that we've done is make sure that, like on our documentation, in the actual URLs that you go for, uh, the help for those files, that those app names actually match the uh, the name of the the, the file of the, the app that's in the marketplace. So even the help file lets you know what the, the app name is. Um, there's other tools that you can look at the repository as well and, and find out what's going on there. So yeah, at the end of this, you're just going to get to uh, a thing. It's going to ask you to reboot, and you're going to be done. Awesome. Well, thanks, Dave. I had a lot of questions this time, and hopefully those questions have been good. I apologize that everybody's been looking at a white screen for a long time. Well, and yeah. And to us talk. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, people have questions. That's true. That's true. And they true. need answers to those questions. And, and we're, we've got 282 packages worth of questions so far. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Well, thanks again, Dave. And uh, tune in again for other screencasts where we'll cover additional topics here with uh, Claire Ross. Thanks, Dave. Thank you.